Hello there, my fellow assassins. What's up? It's Robbie here with Open World Games, and we have a ton of Assassin's Creed Odyssey news to go over right now. So let's dive in. Now, this is a brand new leak, so take it as a rumor, and you can find the source in the description below. But today, we're talking about Assassin's Creed Odyssey's weapon perks, weapon upgrades, and weapon system, and something called engraving. Plus, traveling to Atlantis, the DLC, uh, Ocean Exploration, the map versus Origins, and so much more. So there's a lot to go over here. And again, take a lot of this as speculation until we get the official news here, which will be dropping June 11th at Ubisoft's press conference. I'm going to be heading to E3 and uh, bringing back some really cool stuff from E3 and I hope to get uh, hands-on with Assassin's Creed Odyssey as well. So whatever you guys do, subscribe to the channel and stay tuned. But let's talk about all of these new leaks. So let's start out with the weapons and the weapon perks. It says, weapon perks return similar to Origins, but we can now choose our own perks for weapons. This is called engraving. We need to complete special quests and unlock an engraving as a reward. Now, they say the level up system is back. You need to be a high level to start certain missions uh, in Assassin's Creed Odyssey's areas. And they and uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey's, Odyssey's areas will be restrictive, excuse me, just like Origins. So you will need to be a certain level to survive. And uh, each region will also have a leader controlling the area. And you need to kill the leader's commander and claim outposts to lure him out. We've heard about this type of feature in other open world games. One open world game that I do remember in past years that did have this feature was Mafia 3 and it works very well. It's a lot of fun trying to lure out, uh, you know, the commander or the leader. Uh, now they go on to say we will be visiting all the major Greek cities and learning about Greek history and I imagine that would include the mythology behind it as well which I'm really curious about what they do with the mythology of Greece too. Now uh, they go on to say that Atlantis is going to be one of the DLC areas so I imagine that's going to be one of the more fantastical areas we will be exploring. They had some really cool DLC for Assassin's Creed Origins, that was more mythical and stuff. Uh, so I expect them to continue that trend here heading into Odyssey because it seemed to be very, very popular. Now, a lot of you guys love the photo mode from Assassin's Creed Origins. I love it because I scroll through my Twitter and I see it everywhere. And I see these gorgeous photos of Egypt. I'm like, man, what is this? Oh, this is Assassin's Creed Origins. So yes, photo mode is back in Assassin's Creed Odyssey. No word if this has been improved in any way. Hopefully it has, and they've added tons of features to it. But uh, one game that I love for the photo mode also, as a side note, is Horizon Zero Dawn. I mean, you could change the day-night settings and everything, her expression. It is incredible. Uh, so hopefully they uh, really go all in with the photo mode. It seems like the photo mode is really robust as it is right now. Now, uh, you will be seeing uh, the ability, apparently, to have dialogue options and multiple choice. So, uh, the, he goes on to say this, multiple choice answers, uh, that rumor is true, and it actually impacts the story. He does go on to give an example, which I'm not going to go into story details, so don't worry about that. But there are some story spoilers in some of uh, his leaks here, his supposed leaks. So I don't want to even risk going into anything story related. But he does go on to say that your decisions here with these multiple choice uh, questions and answers impact the entire story. And apparently there will be multiple endings in this game. So this is going to be really a proper, proper RPG for an Assassin's Creed game. So that's something I'm personally really excited about seeing how Assassin's Creed has evolved over the years. And they are really, uh, it looks like they're really trying to build up this franchise to take on the likes of, you know, the Witcher 3, the Rich Witcher franchise, and then of course, uh, things like Elder Scrolls Fallout. They really want to get in there and be known as an open world RPG experience. And of course, they have that unique flair with the parkour. And me personally, I'm a history buff. I love the history with these games. 
Now, they do have some really cool details here. Apparently, uh, the Olympian Games will be featured in Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and there's going to be a champion that you actually face. Uh, but, get this, apparently you will be running into sharks in this game. Now, you will also be participating in these Olympic Games as well. Now, uh, there are side quests, of course, uh, in Assassin's Creed Odyssey. And again, the main villains are going to be apparently known as the Cultists. Uh, now, uh, we will be apparently fighting these uh, Cultists in the E3 demo. We'll be seeing that at E3. So look forward to that if that actually uh, pans out to be true. Now, apparently the story is centered around Leonidas and the war between Sparta and Athens. I am so freaking hyped for this. I am a massive fan of 300, of course. I loved that movie. And, uh, you know, I think Gerard Butler should be in a lot more high-quality movies. That's my opinion. I think he's a great actor. Uh, so uh, I really do uh, hope that they tap into that feeling of being a Spartan and being in this uh, war. I don't know if we'll see the, you know, events depicted in 300. I seriously doubt that. But we will be finding out if we'll be seeing all-out massive wars or what will be happening there. But apparently, again, uh, we will be seeing a lot of naval action in this game. Now, it goes on to say Herodotus uh, is the main character of the story, as he was mentioned also in Assassin's Creed Origins and in the Hidden Ones DLC. Now, he goes on to say this about the map. It's essentially the same size as Origins. It's massive, but instead of vast deserts, we now have huge towns and cities, which means there's a lot more to see and do. Also, the oceans and underwater are more detailed this time around. You guys may remember uh, that Assassin's Creed Origins was delayed, and uh, apparently this game was in the works simultaneously uh, so it makes sense that this game would be coming out. Now, they go on to say this about the release date, that the game is expected to be releasing before March 2019. And that's about all we know about that. So we don't know if this one's coming out fall or if it's going to be hitting uh, in spring of 2019. Again, let me know what you think about that. What is your opinion on that one? Would you like to see a brand new Assassin's Creed game out uh, before? for i mean this fall would you like to see it out this fall post a comment down below do you think that's too soon because i know uh ubisoft they're working on uh the division 2 assassin's creed and then they're apparently going to be revealing some sort of unknown ip that we've never heard of before uh at e3 which i'm super hyped for e3 ubisoft they always have some sort of surprise for us uh, whatever it may be. I remember uh, Watch Dogs was suddenly revealed and then the division came out in the middle of nowhere. It's constantly some sort of surprise from Ubisoft. For Honor was one that just came out of the middle of nowhere. I remember that one in particular. I'm like, what in the world is happening here? So hopefully we get that reaction again this year. Now, if you missed some of the previous rumors, uh, I can go over some of those real quick, but I did make a video about that. You can find that in the description below if you just want to head to that video. Uh, but apparently we will also be seeing multiple bases for purchase across the map. Some of these will be landmarks as well. And uh, horses are going to be playing a bigger role in this one uh, to kind of compete with Red Dead Redemption 2. So your horse is going to be more of a companion this time around, it seems, which will be freaking awesome. I love that type of relationship that you build with the creatures of the world. That's something that a lot of us really enjoyed, again, with the Fallout franchise, with dog meat. You really want to take care of your dog and stuff like that. Maybe down the road, we can actually see proper pets in Assassin's Creed. They should actually do that for the eagles as well. Now, there were some uh, story details that I did go over previously, but I'm not going to go over story stuff. I really don't want to go over too much story stuff, but... Uh, also, if you did not hear, apparently the parkour system will also have its own upgrade path, which I'm super curious about. I'm curious to see if this is going to add more to the game or if it could take away from the game in that it could be like a progressive, a progressive system that is kind of like, hey, 
You can now run. <laughs> you can now hop over walls. I don't know how this is going to work. Or perhaps we'll learn more intricate maneuvers as time goes on. I could see them doing a lot of potentially cool stuff with this, actually. Uh, so I'm waiting for more details about this if this pans out to be true. But you're probably wondering about that combat system. Again, it's going to be similar to Origins. And expect the skill tree to be a little bit different. And apparently we will be able to choose between a female character and a male character. There's conflicting rumors about how that goes in this game. Uh, some say that they're going to be actually uh, characters that are story related. That they're already created within Mind of Story. And then another rumor suggests that you'll be creating a character from absolute scratch. Uh, every little detail. So what would you guys actually prefer? Do you want the ability like Skyrim for example to go in and basically create the character from scratch face. Details every little detail. Or do you prefer something that is more centered around a character that's already made like, uh, you know, The Witcher 3 has? Let me know about that one. But yeah, modern days expect to return. It's not going to be too uh, oppressive to what you're experiencing in history. So they don't want to pull you out of that, uh, you know, story too much. They really want you to uh, be entertained by this new Ancient Greek story, it seems. And the thing, again, that I'm really looking forward to is the mythology of Greek. Uh, I don't know if any of you guys have played Age of Mythology. It was an Age of, Empire, Age of Empires game. I loved those games. I was a huge fan of RTS games. I'm pretty surprised that RTS games uh, aren't more popular. You know, the real-time strategy games. Uh, you don't see, like, massive YouTube channels or streams going on around them. I really wish you did, kind of. But, uh, yeah, that was one thing that I was really into. And I would love to see, you know... Greek mythology highlighted once again. But yep, there it is, guys. The latest leaks and rumors about Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I know, it's really soon after the release of Origins. Let me know if you guys are ready for another Assassin's Creed already. And I do hope you enjoyed some of this co-op gameplay uh, with my buddy Ubisoft, uh, Ubi Central. Uh, this was a total blast to do. I remember we had so much fun with the co-op. <clears throat> and I wish... That they would have some sort of cooperative multiplayer return in their Assassin's Creed titles. I think there's just so much potential for that. Just the customization alone in Assassin's Creed Unity was incredible. Uh, yeah, also, remember, there's rumors that we would be getting a Splinter Cell announcement this year as well. That had really cool co-op uh, back in the day too. So I'm going to keep you guys up to date about all of these things. So stay tuned for that. Thank you guys, as always, for watching. Stay tuned for more, and I will see you guys soon enough in Ancient Greece.